welcome to part two of our Disneyland Paris review. So we did the first one, well, about two weeks ago. Yeah, we're a, bit, we're a bit late with this. Yeah, sorry, we're a little bit late on uploading this one. We've got a little while until Disney. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gap between now and when we go to Florida in uh, 60 days, fast, fast day today. Uh, very excited. Uh, so, yeah, we've got everything we wanted, but that's going to be for another video. But yeah, so we're just trying to fill the gaps now between now and then with, with some of our content. So welcome back to part two of our Disneyland Paris review. And the things that we wanted to go through today are a little bit of an overview of the dining option, the dining plan that we had, and just to give a bit of an overview of the food and the different because snacks we that we had. Food. We do love food and we do love snacks. If you hadn't picked that up from our vlogs, if you've watched those already. Then we also wanted to do a bit of an overview of the parks themselves. So some of our favourite rides, attractions, character meet and greets, and also some of the ones that maybe we didn't like so much. Because, I mean... <laughs> I wonder which one you're going to mention. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no spoilers, but <clears throat> Snow White. Um, so then there was just a couple of other bits and pieces that we wanted to talk through as well. So... Let's, uh, let's get started. So just to give a bit of an overview as to the dining plan that we had, we went for, or we had included in our package, the standard dining plan. We were staying at the Hotel Chien and they threw in, I think it was a part of the promotion, it was a free half um, board. Yeah, it was free half board. I don't remember paying for it because I don't think we would have paid for it. Yeah, no, and that's probably something that we'll come yeah. on to talk about. But so for the purpose of this trip, it was a free standard dining which meant that you got breakfast in the park uh, which was something completely key to new note. yeah key to note we'll come back on to that breakfast in the park and we also got one buffet service meal which you could exchange for cash for 20 was it 28 or 29 euros yeah so which yeah could be exchanged to then go towards a more expensive you know table service meal and actually that's what we found that we did but we'll, we'll come on to that again in a little bit more detail in a bit so first of all breakfast oh breakfast ah breakfast yeah where do we start with breakfast so when the longest I, queues you will see in the park. Yeah. Are for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. If you've got a quiet day, obviously, if you've got a long day, it's probably one of the middle queues, which still isn't good. <laughs> no. So previously, when I've been to Disneyland Paris and I've had a meal plan, breakfast has been included in your hotel. But it seems to be that there's this new feature to the dining plans where you have this option to go into the park. When I say option, this was actually just a, oh, your breakfast is going to be served in the park. Now, I'm not entirely sure what kind of a plan would mean that you eat in your hotel. I think it didn't help. I think we had an event on, didn't we? A special private event where people were dining in the uh, hotel, our hotel as well. Yeah, that's there true. There was a, a like, kind of a make-a-wish event. Yeah, which meant that our... It was a taxi uh, driver there, wasn't it? Yeah, which meant that our hotel was out of action for breakfast. But regardless, I think this package still seems to be... Breakfast in the park. Breakfast in the park. As I say, I'm not entirely sure how you get breakfast in your hotel. I don't know if it's a case if you have to upgrade, pay extra. I don't know if it's because we were staying in one of the more value resorts. Uh, so not entirely sure on that. But yeah, we, we had this breakfast in the park option. So we turned up on the first day. Now obviously having breakfast in the park straight away means that you can only go for breakfast when the park is open. So if you wanted to do what I've done on previous trips, go to breakfast at your hotel really early, get to the park for extra magic time and go straight on the rides, now you have to factor in breakfast. Yeah, get your breakfast. So that's probably the first negative to it. The fact that, as I say, you're really then governed by part time and it does eat into your day. So you have until 10 o'clock in the morning to use your voucher for breakfast. And uh, it's only one location for us. It was only one location available for uh, to what's it called <laughs> to, to eat. To eat. Yeah, yeah, to redeem, to, redeem, uh, to redeem your breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so when, uh, yeah there was only one place that we could redeem our breakfast and that was at the large quick service uh, location just in the entrance to Walt Disney Studios it was something like st 
stars to something. I can't remember. They were all linked, weren't they? We thought it was all different restaurants. I just yeah. just one massive cafeteria like hall. Yeah, but you can't miss it. It's the first one in on the right in like the big back block building as, yeah. as you walk in. So that's where we had to go, but it looked like that's where everyone had to go. Now, I have watched other vlogs where their breakfast has been in the park, but it's been in the Disneyland park. So I'm not sure if they alternate, if some hotels go to the Walt Disney Studios and others go to the Disneyland park. I would hope that that's what they would do for even busier times to manage crowds, but anyway. So yeah, that that's what we had. So as I say, fir first sort of negative to it was the fact you're governed by park times. Second, queues. Yeah, because you can imagine you've got an hour to get breakfast. A lot of people are in the same park and it's, well, everyone goes get the, gets their breakfast to start with, whatever, rush their favorite ride, then get off and get to breakfast. And I think the first time we did it, we did exactly that. We went to the ride first came back for breakfast and the queue was just horrendous. Yeah, literally out the door, we were queuing for about half an hour um, and then trying to find a table just because everybody else was having to do the same thing and you only had one option of where to go. So that wasn't great. It was a little bit frustrating us sort of feeling like we'd wasted a lot of our time. And actually to the point that we decided on the second day, although it felt like such a waste of time during our extra magic hours to go and eat first thing, we did, didn't we? Just because we really didn't want to queue for half an hour, 40 minutes just to get our breakfast. And we thought we'd try it that way first and if it didn't work out for a either way, we decided on the third day that we'd have another way of doing it. Yeah. And the third day, the other way of doing mm. it was to skip it. Skip it altogether. Yeah. Uh, and get a waffle. Yeah, yeah, we just went to one of the like little pop-up stalls that was in Walt Disney Studios and got a really nice waffle. Uh, now, probably just to stress here, the reason that we did that is because we got the free dining plan, so we weren't effectively wasting money that we'd actually yeah. spent. I think if we'd have outright paid for the dining plan, 100% we wouldn't would have, have missed queued. that. <laughs> yeah, we would have queued because we would have been making the most. Um, but yeah for, for our perspective especially when we wanted to go into the disneyland park for some of the extra magic mm. hours it was just such a waste of time being so you know having some such an inflexible plan where you had to go to one park to one restaurant at certain times um so it just didn't really work very well for us uh the food itself was okay um mm, there were a couple of options obviously it's all continental uh, which is fine, you know, we're in we're in France, so it's very focused on the pastries, you know, a, a croissant. We did get a cooked option, which was egg in a brioche bun with mayonnaise in it. Was it, yeah, was it a brioche? Was that croissant? It was like a croissant bun, wasn't it? Was oh, was it? it? I don't... Oh, I can't so... remember. It was like, that's how memorable it was. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> like that. It was all just... I feel like we're really being really negative about it, but it was all just very bland. I think once you've queued, because you've queued for half an hour, you kind of think, oh, this better be good. And so your expectations go from here to need them to be up here to make it worth it. Yeah, and unfortunately, it just was pretty no. underwhelming for us. Um, so yeah, I think overall, I do personally think that Disney need to rethink. I'm not sure why they've taken away the option to eat at your hotel. I personally thought that that worked the best there was a lot more people it could serve it stopped there being lots and lots of people going to one place at one time and yeah it just gave you a little bit more flexibility but there we go it was free so plus side to that uh, you know we did get our breakfast for two days but overall um and i say we've had slightly touched on this about whether we would or wouldn't buy the dining plan for me that would be a real strong reason as to not to yeah. and i'd rather just take my own snacks with me or stop in starbucks or mcdonald's before the park opens and, and not cut into the extra time okay oh, we spent a lot of time talking about breakfast there well, that's the most important meal of the day yeah so second on the list snacks now i personally don't think that disneyland paris has the best snacks i don't know if i'm just looking in the wrong place because i look on instagram sometimes and some people look like they're getting some amazing snacks and i just don't see them no there wasn't anything that jumped out it was all very much samey like popcorn 
drinks, you could get you waffles, but that again that was almost like a wasn't it like a special pop up? Yeah. Like a food pop up yeah, like for in food festival, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Which is where we got the waffle from. And actually they looked like they did some nice food there. Yeah, but that was only but a limited look time. Like it was permanent. No, so it has got lots of nice snacks to it. I suppose maybe I've been to um, Disney World in Florida, so maybe I'm a little bit... And I've um, watched enough DFB. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we've watched a lot of Disney food vlog, haven't we? And so I think that we're so spoilt with the options that we have there that maybe Disneyland Paris just feels a little bit lesser. That being said, we still did have a few really nice snacks while we were in Disneyland Paris. So yeah, one of them being these waffles. So they were from the special pop-up uh, food stall. It was something to do with Ratatouille. I think it was some kind yeah, of... Yeah, it was like a, it was a French, French themed food festival. So it was all kind of French pastries and there yeah. was crepes and... R replette was it the um, melted cheese yeah, something, something like, that. like that and then they had well, some like... remember because i just don't, I don't remember that at all <laughs> and they had like i some... think i saw caramel waffles like, caramel. yeah i was gonna say yeah, dean saw the caramel waffles and just that that was it uh so yeah they had they were really yummy yeah um and and they made a good breakfast yes they <laughs> did make a good breakfast then obviously they had stuff like candy floss which i think yeah. did we have candy floss yes I think at least did. once yeah, because sure anything, anything sweet too. But probably the main one, Disney does really good popcorn. Mm. Yeah, the really popcorn was popcorn. very nice. Uh, so we had popcorn probably twice from the carts that go around. So there's carts dotted around all over the place. Uh, we got some just in the sort of standard, uh, what's it called, little popcorn containers, containers yeah. you know the little cardboard ones so just had one of those on one day and then on our last day we got one of the plastic refillable ones so that we could take our popcorn and have it as a snack on the Eurostar on the way home yeah and we wanted we just wanted that a little bit little memento yeah exactly which we've actually used to save up as a money pot yeah we've got a Disney money pot now haven't we so yeah made for an extra souvenir and it wasn't too much more expensive but one top tip, and I think we mentioned this briefly in the vlog, but a top tip that we found is that they do a combo meal plan for popcorn as a snack and a drink. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how much it was um, on its well, own. I think there's a euro difference between the price of the popcorn and adding the drink, yet the drink on their own was nearly three euro. Yeah, that so was... So you basically get a free drink with your popcorn. Yeah, so there's a tip. If you think you're going to want a drink at some point and you definitely want some popcorn, buy them as a combo meal together. Uh, we will look back to see what vlog it is that we talked about that on. We'll have to go back through and, and find out and we will try and leave a link somewhere up here so that you can have a look and we can probably go into a little bit more detail on that. But that is what we would suggest and the popcorn is really, really good. Third thing we wanted to talk about was the dining. So as we said, we were on the standard meal plan, which means that you could go to any of the buffet restaurants. So there were some of the buffet options in some of the hotels, but then there are also a couple in the parks and in Disney Village. You should point out if you go to the buffet restaurants, it's completely free of charge regardless of the, level, the amount on the buffet. Yes, yeah, that's a really good point. So it means that you just redeem your uh, meal credit. And as you say, there's nothing else to, that we had to pay. Um, so that was the main option. So if we had have wanted to not spend any extra money on any of the dining, there were a lot of options, actually. Yeah. Um, there were some quite cool ones, I think. Um, so we did decide to do one of those. So we just used our dining credit for Plaza Garden. I think that's what it is, yeah, which is in that the Magic nice. Kingdom. A nice view of the castle from the window. Yeah, it was really nice actually. It's just buffets are quite chaotic. So oh, that's why I'm so glad we got a side room, didn't we? Yeah. Thankfully, because there was just children everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> it wasn't even just children. It's just people back and forth and queues for the buffet and back and forth to your table. I I personally don't find buffets really relaxing. I think they have got pros to them because you can get a little bit of everything and the food and there keep going back. and keep going back <laughs> and the food there was really nice it was very nice lots and lots of different meat options salads the desserts were really good there was this whole like sweet haribo station so we um which we totally didn't fill up put bags for to take back yeah us. no we never never do such a thing because <laughs> you know you're not allowed to uh so there's there's definitely 
good things about going to buffets um, and we are really glad I think that we tried one yep and, and it probably, from where it was with the location I think made it worth it because we were basically right down the end of Main Street and you could look all the way up to the castle yeah we had a really nice view and it was a really good location it meant we didn't have to leave the park uh, and what we also did with that is we booked our meals for sort of mid afternoon maybe about three four five o'clock so it meant that we had our breakfast which although we weren't a massive fan of it did fill us up then if we wanted a little bit of a snack we had bought some snacks i think from home and you know we just picked up a say popcorn yeah we had a lot mm -hmm. of mouth um so yeah we, we did that and then we found that we would have a bit of an earlier dinner and that would see us through so it was actually a bit of a money saving thing that we did there oh, as yeah. well which justified why coming on to the next two choices that we had we decided to go for restaurants that weren't on the standard uh, meal plan but were able to take that meal plan credit turn it into a monetary value which was i don't know something like 28 29 yeah, it was euros 29, 29. We'll have to Look it up. Yeah, and put that towards the uh, meals that we wanted in the... Each, by the way. Yeah, each, <laughs> sorry, each. Yeah, so each one credit was worth 29 or so euros. And we could take that money and put it towards a meal in one any of the other restaurants, which I actually think is a really good, really good thing that you can do. And I don't feel like we were that out of pocket. So, for example, the next restaurant... Um, that we wanted to talk about was Annette's Diner, which is just in the Disney Village, and this is a predominantly burger sort of like it's like diner. a sixties feel, isn't it? It's like you get yeah. burgers and shakes. Yeah, they run around on roller skates, and there's like jukeboxes around. Yeah. It feels like you're in Greece. Yeah, so yeah, so <laughs> I think that's probably what they were going for. That yeah, kind of era of American diner. When basically that's all they had over in America, I imagine. Yeah, true. So that's what we uh, decided we wanted to go for. You couldn't make a reservation here, uh, so it was just a rock up. So again, this is why we sort of decided to go at an off-peak time. One, to save some money uh, on having to buy food either side, but also, secondly, it meant that we didn't have to wait in a big queue because, top tip here, if you want to go to a next diner, go at an off-peak mm. time because we went past it after wishes or illuminations whatever it's called that one night and the queue was insane oh, yeah, people eating after the park closed yeah it probably looked like it was i don't know an hours deep worth of yeah, worth of waiting a lot of people yeah so but what we found in these restaurants they do have quite a lot of um like meal plans that you can uh, yeah they have set, set menus set there. menus and so actually i didn't go for it but you did didn't you you went for a set menu where you got starter main dessert you can share the dessert, didn't we? Yeah, and it might have even included a drink. And it was something like 33 euros. So actually, it was only five, six euros by the time we'd put our meal credit towards it and then paid the little bit extra. And because I didn't want the starter or main, my, oh, not main, sorry, I didn't want the starter or a dessert, but I did want like a milkshake. Mine came to sort of the full amount and then we just we just worked it that way i think it worked out we paid about 10 euro extra for the for the meal so it was totally worth it yeah oh because we also bought a big bottle of water because this was on our first day of our holiday where whoa it was hot <laughs> yeah so hot, hot. <laughs> um so we needed to keep hydrated but yeah so just just a top tip there don't feel like you're restricted just because you've got the buffet meal plan that you just have to go to the buffet restaurants because as i say we probably could have actually gone to annette's diner and not paid any extra just by buying uh you know one of the meal plans or you know the set menus and maybe me just having a main yeah uh so it's good like yeah it was, it was yeah, there, are ways to, there are ways around it to make sure you don't spend any extra yeah and the food there's good i liked it yeah it was really nice really yeah. good burger yeah yeah burgers and um yeah the dessert was a that we shared was a was a milkshake milk, wasn't milkshake it? Thing, it was a big wasn't milkshake it? yeah so uh, i think Personally, well worth it. yeah, I think it's it's worth it. It's a good option and just something a little bit different. Then finally, the last restaurant that we decided to go to, this one was a bit more of a treat. We wanted to have one night that we sort of had as a bit of like date night and wanted to go somewhere a little bit different, maybe a little bit more on the expensive side. And we thought, okay, where can we go that's quite unique? Now, one place if you want to really treat yourself 
would be the California Grill in the Disneyland Park. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. In the Disneyland Hotel. But that wasn't the one that we went to. <laughs> Namely because we knew we were picking that when we go to Florida. So yeah, it was a case of... Similar experience in Florida. We'll, we'll, we'll go to it in Florida and yeah. not preempt what we were doing. Yeah. So we decided to go for Captain Jack's, which is a predominantly seafood restaurant. Uh, very pirate themed, obviously. Yeah. But the coolest thing about it is that it's in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Uh, so you can wave it passes by. Yeah, you could, and um, we had the coolest seats. We were gonna ask for these seats, but actually, I think we just ended up with them anyway. Yeah, I think they give us an option. Do you want to be up there or be down there? It wasn't a case of oh, you're up here and we us had, we didn't we didn't have to ask to be moved. It was just a case of you're there or there. And we're like, we'll sit, yeah, we'll, we'll, sit, sit there. we'll sit down by the rope. Yeah, and, and watch everyone go by on the uh, on the ride. Yeah. So if anyone's been to Disneyland Paris, I think it's just as you get on the ride, you're in sort of this really tranquil sort of I don't know, nighttime scene where nothing's happened yet there's not been any drops or anything and you're, the boat's just sort of starting before you go into I don't know one of the caves or yeah. something and uh, over on the left hand side there is yeah I guess it looks like a, a it's almost like a port yeah it looks a bit like a port doesn't it and uh, that's where people are having dinner and it was so cool to sit and watch the boats go past and so people waved and yeah, it was just a really nice, yeah, fun atmosphere. We went on the ride, didn't we, before we went to the restaurant? Yeah, we so, did. So we'd already waved at people sitting there eating, and most people waved back. Yeah, and then we were the ones doing the waving. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it's a real talking point, and it's really unique. I don't... Hmm. They haven't got it in Florida. I really wish they did. Like, I've... The, the only one I've got on in Florida is Small World, isn't it? They've got a restaurant like above Small World. Oh, yeah, just like a yeah. little quick service. But, yeah, that's probably the only one that, that compares. Um... But yeah, so theme wise, 10 out of 10, absolutely mm. loved it. Then food there, actually, uh, this was more expensive. So we did have to put a decent chunk towards this. Yeah, but Still only, what, 20, 30 euros, I think. And that was because we did have alcoholic cocktails treated ourselves. Yeah, it might have been close to 50 euros, I think, by the time we got the set menu. Maybe, and yeah. I think that, but it is what it is we had alcoholic drinks which were like about about 12 15 euros each yes, anyway, yeah they? so yeah that's true that's where the big chunk come from and then obviously service included and you decided that because there were three different tiers of set menu wasn't there yeah and i think you went for the most expensive because it had something like suckling pig on it yeah uh, and i can't remember what i went for but you know because we got the dining plan for free Yes, it might have been 40, 50 euros that we had to pay, but actually... It would have been a lot more. It would have been a lot more if we didn't have the dining plan, mm. and it was just really nice. And we thought one night we'll, we'll splash out, and I think we booked that for about five o'clock. And then when we came out, we did a couple of rides, and then we watched the fireworks, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All the days blur into one. <laughs> I yeah. can't really remember. But uh, either way... 100% recommend if you like seafood. It isn't just seafood because no, like, you had the, the, if, the you're, if you really like seafood, you'll be okay with us the first cheapest menu. Yeah, it's just that if you want more of the meaty type like options. Steaks. I think it was a steak was on the, on yeah. the menu. Or the I really can't remember what I had. Was it the pork I had? No, I didn't have any left. So I had another option. Maybe. I think I had beef. Maybe. Either way, it was, it was really, really nice. If you want to check out the menus, you can do before you go. I think they're all on the Disneyland Paris website. Yeah. That's what we did. Um, then, thinking actually back again to the Disney dining options, we mentioned that a next diner you couldn't book in, but Plaza Gardens and also Captain Jack's you can. And actually, I don't think you can just walk up to Captain Jack's. You can to Plaza Gardens, but Captain Jack's, I'm pretty sure there are a couple of people behind us. And they were, oh, have you got a reservation? They said, no. And they're like, oh, sorry, we can't take yeah. you. You'd so, have to be very lucky, I think, to get a space or you go there super early. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend you calling the Disneyland Paris dining reservation line. And I think it's up to 30 or 60, 60 days in advance. I think yeah. you, can, um, you can book those. And that's what I did. Didn't have any problems. Um, just another thing to be mindful of though, if you're going for one of the restaurants that's in the park, they are also aligned to the park opening hours. So it's okay if you're probably going in the summer and the park's open till, I don't know, nine, ten o'clock. Where when we were there, 
especially in the Walt Disney Studios, because there are a couple of options for restaurants in there, where that park closes closed at six sometimes the latest reservation that you could get was about half past four just mm. to make sure that you didn't feel like rushed um so that's something to be mindful of if you specifically wanted a later dining option yeah. um one restaurant that we didn't get to go to which was on our list but it was closed for refurbishment was the steakhouse in disney village i went there with my dad when i went to disney to do the fun run a couple of years ago and it was great really really nice steak really good value and although it wouldn't have been fully included on our package if you stay in somewhere like the Newport Bay or I think even the Sakura Lodge then you would get the full uh, the standard meal plan and then it would have been included yeah. so just a couple of things to, to think about there a couple of options but if in doubt just just double check what plan you're on and um, go accordingly but you've got loads and loads of options so it's good Right, that was all about food. So next that we and no, no surprise it's probably one of the longest sections of the Christmas film. <laughs> yeah, I think it might have been. So uh, we do love food. That brings us to the end of part two of our Disneyland Paris trip review. All about food. All about food. Yes. So we hope that you enjoyed. We hope that you found it useful. Next week there will be another vlog in the series, and that one is going to be all around our thoughts on the parks themselves. Yeah, what we, what were our favourite rides, what were our least favourite rides. Yeah, all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. So if you liked what you saw today, please hit like on this video or hit subscribe on our channel, and we will be back again soon. See you later. Bye. Bye. That's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's my thing. It's signature move. Fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> okay.